Morning, it's Bernina Jeff at High Fashion Sewing in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today we're going to talk about bobbins. Now on the bobbins in your 7 series, they have little mirrors or silver marks on the outside. These silver marks are kind of fragile. They will wear off, especially if you have a lot of lotion or if you just use sanitizer on your hands and you touch those silver marks, they'll start going away. Here's a 8 series bobbin. And if you look, all those marks are almost gone and the machine has to be able to see those to see if the bobbin is spinning to let you know if you have bobbin thread. It is so frustrating when you're sewing four or five stitches and the screen comes up, no thread in the bobbin. I actually had a gal in class got so frustrated she hit the screen so hard with her finger she broke the screen. So we don't want you to get frustrated. I'm going to show you some workarounds and how to make your bobbins last and some um, products that uh, will help you out. So first off, we're going to uh, take the bobbin case out Oops. and when I'm handling the bobbin, handle it like a rare coin. Hold it at the edges. You don't take a $50 gold piece and touch it in the middle. You hold it on the edges. And that way you're not touching those um, mirrors very often. And to give you a little analogy, or the, uh, what do I call it, the way these bobbins are made, when they're empty, if you look inside, there's actually a mirror inside. So the 790 and some other series will look through there and tell you when you're 10%, 8% full. That's one of the higher features. When you have a 770, it just tells you when you are out of a bobbin. So there are certain little features that as you move up in a line, it tells you more things. So you want to treat your bobbin case very gently. And now let's show you the way I like to wind them. Now when you're winding a bobbin, you can force this bobbin onto that cone shaped spool the wrong way. You always want to have it with the mirror side down. It goes on nice and smooth. You can force it on there. But if you do it that way, the bobbin's spinning the wrong way in the bobbin case. You always want to have your mirror side down. You want to thread your thread from your spool. I have the my famous little clip here, the wonder clip to hold it from coming out. And then you wrap it around the arrow of the tension unit. This little tension unit is only used when you're winding a bobbin. Then you wind it around the direction of the arrow. I like to go seven times. And then there's a razor blade on the back of this little starter unit. So I pull that razor blade off, or pull the thread through the razor blade, and pop that over. Now, if everything's good, your bobbin's gonna wind perfectly level, and it will stop when it's full. If you look down in here, there's a little hole next to the start place, and it takes a 10T. All this does is control how full the bobbin will fill. So a technician will turn that left to right, depending upon how full the bobbin is. If your bobbin winds uh, with an angle, I'm gonna pull this off, if your bobbin winds with an angle, what I mean is more thread here, so it, it kind of comes out a cone shaped here. That has to be adjusted by a technician. The covers have to come off and has to be adjusted. And I would tell the technician whenever you bring your machine in uh, that that's not winding because that's not something most technicians check. They, they tend to think unless the bobbin winder is mentioned and check in time, they're going to leave it alone. So mention that the bobbin's not winding evenly and they can adjust this bobbin winder. This bobbin winder actually can get out of adjustment by uh, when you're transporting it and such. If it gets banged, it'll change the angle and it'll fill at a funny level. So that's something I see quite often. Now, if it does fill at a bad angle, you can adjust it when it's filling by putting your finger or something on the thread and just kind of leveling it out as it fills. So you can work around that until you uh, can see your dealer or your dealer can uh, get to your machine. Then when it's full, just swing it around, use that same razor blade, and now it's ready to uh, put into your bobbin case. So remember, hold it like a rare coin. Um, Protectors? are protectors that I sell that you can buy. They're, they're foam rubber that fit over the top of this for transportation and it fits over the multifunction dials. 
and they're fairly inexpensive. They're, I actually make them myself, so there's something you can call and order at the store. And if you want to call a store, the store number is 970-256-1293, and we're at Mountain Daylight or Mountain Standard Time. Something new that there is, is there are cases that hold the bobbins now. These, this is the, the 7 and the 5 and the 4 series uh, bobbin holders, and it's a foam rubber holder, and it'll hold 25 bobbins. So this is something you can uh, get also. And if you want to get 25 empty bobbins, they, fit, they sell it with the uh, bobbins in there already. So it's always, that's another thing that you can you know, add to your 7 series, or your 4 series, your 5 series. And this will protect your bobbin mirrors from getting scratched off. If they're just in the drawer, rolling around, even uh, in the protective case like this, there's a chance that those mirrors will get a little damaged. So it's a, it's a good, uh, you're always going to need 25 bobbins eventually. Um, so here's another thing I've seen is what looks for the bobbin is this little black unit here. This is called the bobbin monitor. And this bobbin monitor actually snaps in the door. I had a customer call me the other day from watching my videos. and goes, my bobbin thing just popped out. So I walked her through putting it back in. What you want to make sure is there's a red series of wires back here and it plugs in. And see the little light? You want to make sure that's plugged in. So if your bobbin monitor isn't working properly, you want to make sure it's seated right. And you have to, there's a little bar across the bottom here. You put one side in to start with, then you do the center on the other side. And then this is the tricky part, it takes almost three hands. I pull out on this, this little part on the left and snap it in there and make sure it all stays together and then it closes up. Now, what happens if you're sewing along, you sew about 10 stitches and it stops and says you're out of bobbin. You open up the bobbin case, you rethread it, it's totally full. So no matter what you do, we want to make sure that this bobbin monitor, all the little fish eyes in there, the frog eyes, are nice and clean. So I found that these micro swabs you can get at a cosmetic place Two millimeters work great for cleaning your machine and cleaning this out. So you, you swab those out. I don't even put anything on there. Just leave it dry. And that's going to clean the, the sensors out. And that might help look through these little windows. So those sensors look through these little holes or windows in the bobbin case. So what happens if your bobbin case is totally, see it, it's looking for those guys right there spinning. What happens if there's dust and lint or extra threads in there? It's going to give the computer and the sewing machine a wrong uh, reading. And it's going to say you're out of, out of thread, even when you're not. So you want to open up that, look inside that bobbin case and make sure there's no dust bunnies. You don't want to uh, blow in there. You don't want to use canned air, but you want to maybe use your swab again. This is a good place to use your swab clean out any dust bunnies that accumulate in there. Thread has dust, and you're not gonna get away from lint, so it's gonna happen. And I always call threads like water. It's gonna go into the worst place possible, and it's gonna cause a problem. So, check there, check here. Now you still sew, and you sew five or six stitches, and it says you're out of bobbin thread. It is really getting frustrating. You're about ready to throw this machine out the window. I don't know why I spent so much money on this machine. It's, it's a smart machine. It, it, it's designed to let you know when things are wrong. So let's turn that sensor off. So it's very simple. On a 5 Series, you go to Home first. On a 7 Series, we're going to touch these gears. This is your settings. Touch the setting, and right on the menu, you see an eyeball. This eyeball represents it's looking for thread. Think of that eyeball looking for thread. So you have an eyeball looking for thread for the bobbin, and I turned it off. See, the eye is, is closed. Now, if I'm having trouble with it seeing the top thread, I can turn the top thread eyeball off. The other good time for doing this is, let's say you just want to make holes in paper. When my mom taught me how to sew, sew straight, she gave me a lined piece of paper and no thread in the machine, and I sewed 60 lines perfectly straight until I could sew on the sewing machine. Couldn't do that if you didn't turn the thread monitor off. Um, also, if you want to do patterns with pounce, you can do that this way. So, what, look for these monitors. Totally okay, you can sew forever with these monitors off. 
You just have to watch your thread. And most of us learned with machines that we knew when it was out of thread. So the big time to have these monitors on is when you're embroidering. Because if you're embroidering, that thing is going and you may want to step away from the machine. You step away for a minute, it breaks the thread and it's going to stop for you. So it's important to have the monitors uh, working properly when you're embroidering. But if you're having issues, just turn the lower monitor off and it's fine. And I would mention that to the next time you have it uh, tuned up. These, these can be replaced, the uh, monitor unit. Um, but it's a great workaround. It lets you keep sewing. It's always Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Nobody's around. So check my videos. This will help you keep sewing. And uh, call us during the day. I've helped several people through. And I'm just here for the love of sewing. I want people to enjoy their Bernina machines. I like people to enjoy their baby lock machines. Anything they're sewing with, I want them to enjoy them and get the most out of them. So this is Bernina Jeff at High Fashion in Grand Junction, Colorado. My uh, email is jpv, as in Victor, l-e-f-t-y, at aol.com. Yes, I am left-handed, and I'm old school AOL. So uh, please enjoy my videos. Please subscribe. It's actually a little bit of a windfall. I'm getting money off of selling uh, my special tipped oil. Oh, I forgot to show you that. I make these oil bottles, tips, and uh, precision point to oil your machine. So if you haven't seen any of my other videos, this precision tip oiler, I sell it for $12, which includes um, the shipping. There's two colors. Red is for the black bobbin machines, anything that has a black bobbin, and a yellow one, anything that has the silver bobbins. And yellow is also designed for the workings of the machine. The the red oil is a little lighter weight for strictly in the hook area. The nine, Bernina calls it the nine hook. So anytime uh, you want to oil your hook, you want to use the red oil. And well, I got a second here. I'm going to show you how quickly, quick it is to oil the hook. One last time. Take the foot off. Take the plate off. When you take the plate off, pull it forward. If you push it backwards, you're going to get stuck. Now, I'm going to rotate it. There's a shiny point right here. And I just put a drip of oil on there. Every time I start sewing in the morning, in about every two hours of sewing, I put a drip on there. This method has been approved by Bernina, July 2019 technical letter. So I know it works. They thought it was a great idea. So please order the oil when your other oil gets low or if you're just tired of having to squeeze it or having it leak all over the place. This doesn't leak, so it's a great little scabbard tip and it gets the oil in the right place. Thank you very much, Jeff at High Fashion.